Good morning, everybody. Till they get the presentation up, Malika, fantastic and a, a great way to catalyze this last few hours, uh, last almost an hour and a half that we have left of the Zermatt Summit second edition, because this is about moving into that space of action. It is about distilling what we have had an opportunity to hear from some of our speakers and the panelists. It is about articulating and solidifying what we have been able to really process out of what we have heard, what we have learned from each other as a, almost like a group of learning. We've had so many opportunities to interact over the breaks and over the dinners and lunches. So this is about now taking it to that space of, so what next? And as Malika rightly said, even if each one of us can come back next year and talk about that one little thing that we could do because of the inspiration we got from here, then I think we are speaking um, really about what we took from here. And the Transformational Leadership for Excellence um, one hour that we will spend with you our attempt will be to move into that space of action. And our attempt will be to do that from our individual spaces. It's always all right to say what someone else can do, what the organization can do, or what the government can do, or the regulators can do. But let us start with what I can do differently. And we will, uh, we will spend this next hour or so in a, in a workshop-oriented mode. Is that all right for us? Yes, because we've been sitting here and it's been two days and I think it's a nice morning, not too much sun though, but we will take this opportunity. I think the roof is going off and I mean opening up and um, Malika, hopefully Indra will not jump down here from the roof. So we'll do a bit of activity together and do we have the presentation now? Not yet. Ah, okay. Oh yes, I have to learn this. Yeah, this is a line of, uh, huh? this is the boundary. Okay, <laughs> there it is. Okay, so transformational leadership for excellence. Uh, let's go zipping through this. This is an intervention which, uh, this is an intervention which now we do with uh, current and emerging heads of states of almost 40 countries we have worked with. And thank you, Mr. Wasserman, for inviting us to, to share with you a very small vignette of that, almost like 2 to 3% of the entire uh, curriculum, if you will, of what we do. And there are three key pillars on which this whole process rests. The first pillar is that of personal empowerment and dynamism. Again, that aspect of let us start with me. What can I do to become personally more dynamic? What tools and techniques, what processes, what knowledge do I have to be able to help me to become that change I want to see? I get, I get an opportunity to interact with people who can inspire me. I have ideas which, which I want to implement. What is it that I can do to, to, to equip myself to be able to do that better. So the first pillar really rests on that, and then we have a whole host of tools and techniques, processes, knowledge that can assist in this process. The second is having done that, man is a social animal, everything that we do in the world today is as a team. What can I do to really enhance that sense of connectedness, to enhance that, that team that we have, the teamwork uh, amongst our people, whether it's our small team, whether it's a family, whether it's our organization, communities, even the country. So that is the next pillar. And the third is that of how can then, therefore, that catalyze into a big vision, a broader vision? How can that catalyze? How can that propel me to get into being that change agent, that model for the change that I want? So for the purpose of the next hour, we will just focus very briefly on the first pillar of what can I take back from this summit, a few things that I can actually do on a daily basis that can help me get equipped better. Okay. So we've been talking a lot. Yesterday we had a fantastic morning session on servant leadership. There have been many, many beautiful ideas that have been 
shared with us over these last two days. I'm going to invite all of us now to do a little 333 process. Are you ready with it? Are you ready to do it? Yeah, okay. So what we will do is quickly, I want to invite you to make a group of three. Around where you're sitting, just if you could group into a, a threesome. Yeah, three people. Okay. That was fairly easy. You could stand, you could sit. It's your choice. You could continue sitting also, that's fine. All right. So with the first goal achieved, the next thing we need to do is in three minutes. So the next three, four is okay, but three is better. Yeah. So the next three minutes, I want to invite you to really distill everything that happened these last one and a half, two days, and think of three qualities that we think a good leader should have. Based on all that we discussed last two and a half days, what according to you in the next three minutes, can you consensus, can you reach a consensus on what are the three qualities of a good leader? Can we begin please? Yeah. And if you have already finished with your qualities and you want to come up and write it on the whiteboard here, welcome to do so. If you have finished and you want to come and write it up, you could do that or wait for us to share later. I can't help noticing it's the women doing, okay, we have Richard. All right, Marianne. Just scribble it wherever you want, yeah. Just wherever you find Uh-huh. Just scribble wherever you find the place, yeah? Go ahead. Yeah, we could scribble it here as well. Please come. Please come. So we have one minute left.
Okay. Okay. That's fine. Uh, may I invite you to take your seats again? We want to write it down, okay? Yeah. We have a we have a sheet here. We got only one. Roger, you want to just scribble something here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think that's good. I think that's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Right. Okay, thank you. May I invite you to take your seats again? Once you get into action, it's difficult to get back onto your seat. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so let's see what are some of the qualities we have here. Uh, inspirational, committed to humanity, humility, courage, empathy, trustworthiness, goal orientation, okay, mindfulness, listening to others, listening. Say yes and no to others, love the other, self-awareness, integrity, caring. Amazing, thank you. One big round for all of us for having completed this list. Huh? Okay, some more. Love with the heart, I like that. Discipline, all right. Walk the talk, capacity to listen. So it's great. There are a lot of commonalities, right? Qualities like empathy, integrity, ability to listen. If you really notice, of all the lists that we made here, not many of them say we should be double doctorates or we should have PhDs in mechanical engineering or something of that kind or that we should have written 25 papers of expertise in our areas, right? So a lot of these are what we could call personal skills, soft skills, but if you really reflect back, and I can say that about myself, that neither at school nor at college was I taught how to do some of these things. I was always told, don't be angry, but nobody taught me how not to be. I was told it's good not to be jealous, but okay, how not to be? So the approach we take in TLEX, there are a number of approaches to do this, but the approach we take in TLEX is to start inside out. Can I look within? Can I connect with myself? Because if I'm not at home, how can I invite a guest at home? You know, we talk about connecting with teams, we talk about running organizations, we talk about running nations. But sometimes we forget that we have to start from within. So that's the approach we take at TLEX. And therefore the first, first, first thought we want to invite you to share with, along with us, is to reflect that we actually have seven levels to our existence. Something that might sound new to you, but something we want to invite you to reflect on a little bit. So if you really look at it, you know, if I say my name is Rajita, right? So what is Rajita? At a very gross level, it is this body, right? I have this body, which is five foot four. It's, it's uh, not as thin as I would like it to be. I'm working on it. But that is what makes me distinct and separates me from Mark, separates me from Malika, separates me from Prabhu, separates me from Christopher. So at a, at a level of the body, we are distinctly separate from each other. And I think it is commonsensical, you will agree with me, that a body has to be disease free. As a, as a leader, if I'm not fit, if I'm not healthy enough, there is little I can bring to my team. It's like going to a doctor who's f forever suffering from a cold and cough. I'm sure my friend Marie, who's been having a bad cold since yesterday, will not feel confident to go and take medicine from him. So at a level of the body, we have to be healthy and disease free. The second, already subtler than the body, already something where the, dip, dis, the, the separation ceases to exist is the breath. Are we all breathing right now? Huh? Seems like it. Huh? We are alive. Seems like it. But not too much do we reflect on it. If you think about it, the first thing that we did as we were born as a little baby 
was we took a breath in, somebody gave us a whack on the back, and we cried. And the last thing we do when we will depart is breathe out, and hopefully we've done something in life that few other people cry that we breathed out. But between this breath in and breath out, we hardly give attention to the fact that we are breathing. And our breath is really a secret that we can unravel to really, really equip ourselves. Because the breath is the link between the mind, which is the third level, and the body. You, you would have experienced that right now, for example, we are all sitting here. It's a nice, friendly, cozy atmosphere. The body is relaxed. How is the breath? May I invite you to feel your breath? How is your breath? It's soft. Yeah, it's slow and soft. Think of a time that you're almost going to miss a flight. Think of a time when there is a difficult meeting to get into. How is the breath at that time? It's shallow, fast. Yeah, make a, no, make a speech at Zermatt is comfortable. Everybody is so friendly, Christopher. <laughs> it's the first category, yeah? So typically, how we feel is how our breath behaves and how our body reacts. So when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm nice and comfortable, my breath is nice and shallow and my body is comfortable. When I'm anxious, when I'm stressed, my breath is short and my body, I have palpitations, I have cold palms. So typically, it's how we feel that impacts our body and breath. We change the equation. We tweak the equation. We start working with our breath to affect our mind and body. And why is it important to impact our mind? Because as leaders, if we don't have a stress-free mind, there is little chance that we will be taking the right decisions. Would you agree? Yeah, I come to office stressed already. I come to a meeting completely out of, out of my, out of my day-to-day. -day. There is not much I'm going to be able to achieve. So it's, it's important as a leader, as a human being, to address the mind. Let me go quickly into this because we want to do some, some practical stuff with you here. Subtler than the mind is, an in, is our intellect. That faculty in us, are we aware of it? As we are speaking right now, we are hearing so many things. Something in us is saying, yes, yes, okay, I agree, fine, that sounds okay. Oh, come on, this one, this doesn't make sense, it's okay, let me just. D do you think, that, do you agree this happens? Yeah, there is that faculty in us which can discriminate. There is that faculty in us, that is the intellect. And it is so important to understand that this faculty is working. And if it is not confusion free, if it is not obsession free, again, the decisions, the actions that we are taking are not going to be clear. Do I realize that I'm, you know, my intellect is now getting biased? Do I realize that my intellect is getting uh, loaded by previous experiences? So how aware I am of this? And next, subtler than the intellect is the memory. Yeah, when we go back from Zermatt, we will have great memories of the wonderful conference, the beautiful mountains, the great weather, the great people we met. So our memory can be our friend. It can also sometimes be not our friend. Because the nature of the memory is to remind you of what you should forget and makes you forget what you should remember. Would you agree? Sometimes, you know, somebody will tell me 10 months ago that, you know, this dress, I don't think it looks nice. That person could have complimented me 25 times after that, but the only thing I remember is you tell, told me that dress was not nice, yeah? And why for a leader this is an important faculty? Because as we grow more senior, we are accumulating a wealth of experience. And that wealth is what is helping us take our initiatives, take our, take our decisions. And that wealth is, is all in our memory. So I get into a meeting with Mark, and I remember that three years ago when I met him, he did this. It's already in my memory and it's already, it's already influencing my decision. So how aware I am and what can I do again to impact this in a positive way? And subtler than that, our ego. We all brought our egos here, right? That which makes me feel good about myself, that which makes me feel recognized. It gives me my self-esteem. It is on the positive side. And it can be, if it is an ego which embraces all, if it's an ego which, is, which addresses some of these things of me being able to really be that inclusive leader, then we are talking something here. Otherwise, that can be something that we need to, uh, something that we need to worry about. And subtlest. We started on that note with Father 
Butte, uh, Butte, Butte, pardon my French pronunciation. We started with that. That space within us, that space which is, which is so, so deep within us, we recognize it. We have experienced it at moments of quietude sometime in our life, at moments of complete happiness sometimes in our life, and also in moments of deep sorrow sometimes in our life. How do I reach that space within me? Because that is the key to help me really propel myself, help me connect to myself, and therefore connect outside. And the, the, the good news is that the breath can become or is that tool which can help us really impact each level of our existence. And I'm going to invite Christophe now to help us understand how we can actually do it ourselves. Christoph? Can we welcome Christoph, please? Wonderful. So in, in, in conclusion, um, I think it is right to say that uh, it is our assumption that to achieve this personal excellence, which we all felt is so important to be a good leader, we need to attend uh, to these seven layers. And excellence happens when these seven layers of our existence are in harmony. But I have a question to you. So many brilliant minds coming together for three days and so many brilliant ideas being created. What is actually a thought? What is happening in us when, when we have a thought? Just on a, on a very plain biological level, what is happening when we have a thought? So many studies, of course, these days, and some people, they scare us, and they say you're using only 5 7% of your capacity. What is happening in us when we have a thought? Illumination, yes. Understanding, yes. What else? Huh? Joy, okay. Movements. Right, there is a movement, right? Okay. Please. Activity, yes. Sorry? A reflection. Cells connecting, right. Of course, so many theories, but one such theory stroked me recently when it was said to have the correct a, a, a thought is an impulse right an impulse of intelligence of energy in our brain and what they are saying they are using not all of the potential but it seems to have the correct thoughts one of the latest research says we need to have 16 of these impulses of intelligence and energy coming together at one synapsis in one spot but in what speed we cannot even imagine. They say, between the first impulse and the 16 impulse, not more than 1 to the power, 1 to the 10 to the power, 1, 1 by 10 to the power of 30 cycles per second shall pass. In that time which we cannot even comprehend or grasp, if these 16 impulses come together, we have the correct thought. So it is actually a miracle that this is happening in us all the time. So let's look at this mind a little bit closer. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar once said, and I loved it when, when I read it for the first time, he said, thoughts obviously, obviously drive our actions, right? But actions very soon, when we repeat them, they become a habit. A collection of habits we suddenly define as our personality. And the personality defines the destiny. It was that one thought which was leading me to action. I kept repeating it. People called it a personality and here it is ten years later, my destiny. So it's definitely worth looking at this mind which is a miracle. And mind, what we saw, means energy. How do we gain energy? Yes, this morning already Hernando was giving us a full speech. How do we usually gain energy? What are the sources of energy? Air, okay. What else? Water, okay. Food, yeah. Love, yeah. Sorry? Greed, <laughs> okay, thank you. What else? Hatred, okay. Hmm? The need to conquer. 
Okay, gives energy. Okay, we could maybe say, in a very basic way, four sources of energy. Definitely rest. They could sleep. The food. How long can we live without the food? Hernando was quoting. Huh? He was saying three weeks. That's not correct. So what is correct? Much longer. How long? Huh? 40 days. For me, it's about two to three hours. I don't know about you. <laughs> but I think Guinness says, what? 52 days. Okay. Then the, the mind. One compliment and how the system changes. One criticism and how the system changes. And maybe the most important source of energy, the breath. Again, we can live 30, 40, 50 days without food. How long can we live without sleep? Two, three days? One week? Yeah, scientists say three, four days and then it's, they had to stop the research. How long can we live without breathing though? Huh? Two, three minutes? So which one is the most powerful source of energy? Obviously the, the breath. But scientists say that today we use only about 30% of our lung capacity. So we are using only 30% of the most important tool to energize our body, to energize our mind. Should we change this? Would you like to learn one or two techniques? Okay, good. Let's do that together then. Okay. So I will take off my suit. And uh, we'll do together one, one exercise. This exercise is called the full scientific breath. And I will demonstrate, and then we can, we can do it together. I will use my hands so that it's not more, more visual for you. So, first the normal breathing. on our chair and it's good to have a, the back free huh? so we sit in front of the chair and uh, to make it uh, more time so we put one hand on our stomach please don't put it on the neighbor's stomach <laughs> <laughs> and one, one hand on your chair This is your breath. And breath is life. Observe it, maybe you feel a movement in your stomach, maybe it's not much. Maybe it's the chest. Just witness. And now, through your nose, take a long deep breath in. And breathe out. Very good. Again, with a smile, let's take a long deep breath in. And breathe out. And now we breathe consciously into the belly. Let's take a long deep breath in and have the feeling the belly is expanding and breathe out, you contract. Again, 
take a long deep breath in without effort just the intention into the belly and breathe out let's go very good excellent can breathe in to the belly and breathe out now we shift our attention to the chest. Breathe in. The feeling you're breathing into the chest. Expanding. Breathe out. Relax. Again, breathe in to the chest. And breathe out. Breathe in, and breathe out. Now we combine the two. Take a long deep breath in to your stomach. Continue to inhale into your chest. And breathe out, stomach. And then chest. Again, breathe in to the stomach. In the chest, to breathe out first the stomach, then the chest. Keep breathing, keeping your eyes closed. Long deep breath. Relax, let go. Keeping your eyes closed. Observe the sensations in your body. Relax. Again, let us take a long deep breath in and breathe out. And then you can open your eyes again. How was that? Feeling relaxed? If we observe our mind, do we now have uh, more or less thoughts in the mind? Who feels the mind is calmer? Less thinking? You can raise your hand. Wow. That's interesting. What a small exercise, but it had an impact on our mind. It's very difficult to win over this mind, through the mind, isn't it? If I'm not able to sleep, but I really want and have to because tomorrow is a tough day, if I tell to myself, Christoph, immediately sleep, now fast, because tomorrow you have to get up, will it work? To win over the mind through the mind is not easy. But the breath can do this job. You would like to learn one more technique? Yeah? I couldn't, cannot hear anything. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, we'll do one more. I will demonstrate first, and then we'll do it. We'll do it together. This is called the, the bellows breath, and um, it gives lots of energy. So I will demonstrate <coughs> again. The, it is the breathing through the nose, and the mouth is closed. And just have a look.
okay hmm we can just uh, get acquainted with this so let's take the uh, hands in position yeah there's a loose fist in front yeah we can remove finally after three days we can remove the jacket open the ties a little bit but keep the trousers on yeah meanwhile <laughs> after all <laughs> okay yeah you need a little space also and there's one basic instruction which we would like to give before any accident. Hands do not move to your neighbors, but they move up to the sky. Yeah? We would like to mention. Okay, very good. And then let's have a look at Rachita. Look this beautiful smile. Can we all place such a smile on our lips? Very good. Okay, so then now we are in position. Loose fist. Yeah? Beautiful smile. You know, when we smile, there's only 18 muscles active in the face. But when we are serious, 45. So it's a good business to smile. It's very economic. Okay, good. Okay, wonderful. And now we keep this position for the next half an hour. <laughs> okay, good. So relax your shoulders. Very good, very good. Very good. Should we do the technique? Okay. So it is like that. We go up, and then with the both hands, and we open the hands. Close. You can place your hands, arms facing the ceiling. Out movement, we take a long deep breath in. And straight down. And up, down. Very good. Keep going. The mouth is closed. You can use your nose. I will tell you why afterwards. Keep breathing. Relax and let go. 
Close your eyes and just be with your body and your breath. Relax your shoulder. Observe the sensations in your body, keeping your eyes closed. Relax. Just let go. Again, let us breathe in. And Breathe out. Take another long deep breath in. And relax, let go. And if you wish, you can open your eyes again. How was that? Was good? The opposite values are complementary. Of course, we want to be so dynamic. We want to achieve and we have to deliver. But isn't it that if we want to throw an arrow, if I want to throw an arrow, what is my first action? I have to pull it back, isn't it? The more I pull it back, the more dynamic it will go forward. So sometimes I feel when we are able to rest and disconnect from our responsibility, then that helps us to again take it very dynamic. And uh, there of course we all have different tools and these breathing techniques can be, can be maybe one of them. Because it's a whole secret, it's a science, it's amazing. Maybe you are wondering why are we breathing through the nose and not through the, through the mouth? Scientists today say that there are 300,000 nerve channels going from the nose up to the brain. 300,000 nerve channels. And there are tools and techniques to activate those and to balance the both sides of the brain so that both alpha and beta waves are in harmony. And we have that creative flow which we would like to have. And one such technique, a very simple one, um, if you wish, we could, we could uh, still share. Would that be of interest for you? Yeah, that's more too. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So, um, that's... Um, sometimes I feel that uh, effective techniques are so simple that we don't take them so serious. That's one of them. I also didn't take it serious in the beginning. So, we are working with our nose drills. It's called the nose drill, nose drill breathing. And um, it's, we're going to do it alternatively. Yeah? So, you can use, for example, your thumb to open and close your right nostril, yeah? Again, <laughs> we work on our own, not of the neighbors, yeah? And then you can use one of the fingers for the left, yeah? Okay, that's, that's, that's easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna breathe in from the left side, then breathe out on the right, again, breathe in on the right, breathe out on the left, and breathe in on the left. So it's always out and in on one side, and then we change. Okay. We'll do it together though, and we can simply close our eyes. Relax, take a long deep breath in, and down. And now close your right nostril and breathe in with your left nostril. 
Softly you close your left nostril and breathe out to the right one. You breathe in through the right nostril. Close it and breathe out to the left. Breathing in to the left. Breathing out to the right. Breathing in, change and out. Keep breathing in your own rhythm, long and deep, without any effort. It can be very soft breathing. The mind is very subtle. And the language of the mind is letting go, it's relaxation, it's effortlessness. Keep breathing. Keep breathing long and deep. Relax. You can relax your hands. Place them both on your legs. Arms facing the ceiling. And just let go. Just let go. Drop all the weight of your body on the chair you are sitting on. Just let go. Become aware of the sounds in your environment, the ventilation, people moving or coughing, the breath. Embrace all these sounds. And you are now in harmony with your environment.
Take a long deep breath in. Then breathe out. Become aware of your body. Your body is a beautiful gift. Love it very dearly. Feel your legs, feet and the toes, the knees. Feel your abdomen and genitals, chest, shoulders and arms. hands and fingers, the throat, the face, and the whole body. The whole Take a long deep breath in. And breathe out. Again, take a long deep breath in. Become aware of your thoughts, whether pleasant or unpleasant, just embrace them. in harmony with your thoughts. Take another long deep breath in. Become aware of your feelings. Whether pleasant or unpleasant, just embrace them. You are now in harmony with your feelings. Take another long deep breath in and let go.
can feel your body. Maybe you want to stretch your body a little bit and move it. Take a long deep breath in, stretch your arm. Breathe out. And then you can slowly become aware of your environment again. How was that? Feeling good? Maybe just if you make a wave test, how was it? Okay. Yeah, was it good? <laughs> I okay, yeah, good for both hands, it's even better. You know, and I think Rachita will conclude on that. Um, where's the connection to these? techniques which of course derive also from the yoga and there's a lot of scientific research on it these days. Where's the connection to good governance and ethics and um, humanizing globalization? What I feel to have observed is that the goodness, the good qualities, the compassion, the love, the friendliness and the care for others is maybe our nature. We have done lots of seminars, even in prisons, and when they report back to us, they say, when I did that, I was not myself. And, and really, if let's look back to the four sources of energy. If for the next three, four, five days, all of us, we don't get the rest, the food, the peaceful mind, forget about the breath, I could not guarantee for my actions. Will I be always that peaceful and friendly and compassionate? So for me, it's almost, um, I would compare it with the sun. The sun is always there, but can we always see it? No. Sometimes it's clouded and there might be night. I feel these values are in us, but we cannot always connect. And, and to connect to this goodness, I think is really important. And it's not easy, because the more I'm disconnected from myself, the more painful is the journey to myself. Simple example, if I feel very restless, is it easy for me to sit calm here for 10 minutes? Not at all. I want to go to my Blackberry. So maybe a reminder for us to take away that we have these, these moments of, of reflection, these moments where we connect to ourselves. Because so impressive, recently of one of our seminars, one of the participants told me that, hey, something dawned me. I, 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 I just recall how I act in my life. He says, when I go with my car and I have a, a diesel and I go to the uh, petrol station and there's no diesel available, what do I do? I, of course, care for my car. I don't mind dri driving another 50 kilometers till I get the proper diesel for my good car. But if I'm a little hungry and thirsty and I come to the same gas station and there's nothing which suits my body, he said, you know what I usually do? I simply take it anyway. I just eat it, even if it's rubbish for my body. He said, I learned that I care more for my car than for myself. And it rang a bell in me, because I also do that at times. So here, that is something uh, we, which we wanted to share. And I think, Rachita, we would like to invite you to, to conclude and uh, share from your vast experience. the clicker. So these were just, um, this was a very, very, very tiny vignette of some of the really beautiful breathing techniques uh, that are available to us. And uh, there is some research uh, 
which I think. Yeah, this is some interesting research, which shows uh, Christoph was talking about the alpha and the beta waves. So the alpha waves in our brain indicate our awareness level, right? How aware are we? So you will reflect that on times when we are so alert and so aware, is there rest for us? No, you have a long day. Suppose you had a board meeting, you had 16 hours in the office, you come back, there is, you are tired in the mind. Better waves are the waves in our brain which indicate restfulness. When we are rested, suppose I'm sleeping in the night, am I aware? Not really. So when we practice with the breath, research shows that our brain becomes capable and the alpha and beta both waves increase. And that is the source of creativity, that is the source of intuition, that is the source of that, that space that starts revealing to us when effortless it becomes to connect, to reach out. And that is, you know, there is a lot of this research available which we can invite you to actually go through a little later. We want to leave you with a few thoughts which our founder Shri Shri shared because we are talking so much about ethics. This was at the International Anti-Corruption Conference in Korea a few years ago. And he shared the five C's for combating corruption or for ethical leadership, if you will. The first C, that of connectedness. Corruption begins out of outside our sphere of connectedness. There is little chance that I will be unethical with my father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, hopefully, right? If I feel a sense of connectedness, the chances that I'll be unethical are low. So what can I do to increase my sphere of connectedness so that it starts expanding and expanding and expanding and more? And yesterday, we had a chance to talk about it in our little group with Mark and Barbara, Maya. You know, how can we create that little spheres of connectedness that become large and vast? Second, a sense of courage. If I see something that I want to speak up against, what is the courage I have to do that? To stand up to be different, to stand up to speak out. The third, commitment to contribute. I think that's a universally appreciated value amongst us. What am I giving back? Do I recognize that there are people who may have lesser than me and do I have the ability to feel that and give back something? Care and compassion, self-explanatory. Do I feel for the pain for someone else? Why it is important, we all know. And ultimately, a cosmic understanding of life. What is the purpose of my life in this big universe? Scientists will tell us what a tinier than the tiny speck of life we are. And how old are we? 30, 40, 50, 60? How many more years to go? And whether I had 10 billion or 20 or 15 or 30, where is it going after me? Is it going with me? So just a reflection, an ability to to appreciate life in this perspective can really sometimes give a reality check to our actions. So we thought it would be nice to share these thoughts with you. And uh, yesterday I had a request, actually Prabhu said in his introduction, you know, um, I was caught in the Taj attack. We were about 14 and a half hours hostage, me and my husband, Vijayadavan, Malika and all, Luckily, thank God, escaped at the nick of time. And, you know, really, that was a moment of truth for me. I realized how much I wanted to live. And I remember somewhere around 4 or 5 in the morning when I was completely tired and completely thirsty, hungry, sleepy, everything, and just scared. I was telling to myself, you know what, I will be a very good person. I was, you know, thinking of my God. I said, okay, I will control my mobile bills. Okay, I will do this and that, but I want to live. I want to live. I told my husband even, okay. I, and we couldn't talk because we were hiding in one tiny little space. And the only reason we normally fight is because he scatters paper all around the house. If you come to my house, you can't, you can't see which is office and house. It's all the same. We always fight on that. So I told him, it doesn't matter. You can throw all the paper you want. But let us get out of here. And that truly is the moment of truth, friends. 
After that, you know, a lot of my friends would be scared to get into meetings with me because I, if anyone got into a fight, I would say, shut up, you're alive. You know, that is the basic. And a lot of the thoughts we shared here, we heard here about the recognition of really the pure value of life, which also is a danger in many parts of the world. And we are fortunate that uh, we don't, we have not experienced it. God forbid we should not. And I wrote a book actually after that. I wrote some 26 poems. <laughs> it was, I guess, a process of healing for myself. So I wrote to the terrorists. I wrote to the Prime Minister of India. And I wrote, and I actually sent them out also. I wrote to the Taj Hotel. The Taj Hotel became an animated uh, human being to me almost, you know, because it was, we were, it was caressing us through the night. So I was requested to share something which I wrote to the terrorist, which I thought might uh, be suitable to this, uh, to this gathering with your permission. A few lines, is that all right? Yeah, OK. This um, book is called The Gift of Life. And this particular verse is called, If Only I Met Thee, as in the terrorist. You must have been a cute baby had a favorite toy, chased little chicken with glee. I was just like that too, though I never met thee. You must have had a best friend, made paper boats in the rains, <clears throat> loved the fluffed up hot puri, puri is a little Indian pancake, fried. I was just like that too, though I never met thee. You must have loved the warm cuddles of your mother, had joyful rides on the rickety merry-go-round, cracked fresh winter mungfali peanuts. I was just like that too, <clears throat> though I never met thee. <clears throat> then when did our lives change? How different our paths became? I turned to spirituality to heal minds. You picked up the gun against mankind. At our cause, we were still the same, though I never met thee. That night, we came face to face. I thought it would be nice to meet thee. I ran fast, only away from you, because you had come to kill me. Later, I read that you died instead, while I live on to a greater destiny. My faith was more powerful than your weapon when you came to kill me. You taught the world that violence never wins. No one should be where you have ever been. I'm sure your heart knew you were wrong. Then why did you come to kill me? Your hatred has made my love stronger. I will work more for peace and harmony. You would have been a different person too, if only I had met thee. So, let us at a speed, globalize humanism before they globalize terrorism. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, that's fine. Pass it on.